he has been assam's number 2 in tennis a sport he had been passionate about since childhood he quit tennis at the age of 21 as body did not support him further do sports people have a fallback option if sports do not turn out to be as lucrative how much do top professional tennis players earn in india how is the sporting infrastructure in india especially in tennis did india let down a good sporting prospect is there politics in tennis how do sports bring out the personality trait of a person is lack of grades a deterrent for the people pursuing sports what is more important skills or the grades I had this fascinating conversation with Rakta Datta, a student of the Wall Street School who did the flagship financial modeling and valuation program and subsequently got placed in one of the top consulting firms in the world. Hope you find the conversation as engaging, as insightful, and as much fun as I had with him. So here you go. So Rakta, good evening, and thanks for good taking time for this okay. interview. It's my pleasure. Great. uh we have had many students in the wall street school you know who wanted to take the financial modeling and valuation token from us and uh, you know a special case uh, right and absolutely delighted with your placement <laughs> once you, uh, you know you joined us when olympics were around the corner <laughs> right and uh, your sports was in yourself right so yes, you know from being from sports and then doing the financial modeling and valuation program and then now getting placed right so it's been a very gratifying placement for us as a firm also and i'm i'm, I'm sure that it must be the same in your case as well it was an amazing journey that i agree <laughs> <laughs> okay so just tell a bit about you your background your qualifications and what have you done in sports okay um so i'm raktav datta from the very beginning i'm from assam i've played tennis ever since the first standard to be honest and uh, i did my bcom honors from delhi university and during that time i played professional tennis as of right now currently i still am assam ranked number 2 in professional tennis assam ranked uh, number 2 in professional tennis yes sir fantastic thank you and i think my national ranking has gone down quite a bit it's mm-hmm. around 250 now because i haven't played in quite some time mm-hmm. and that's basically what I did during my college years i've also played some international tournaments mainly asian tournaments i was in the top 2 or 300 in all of asia during my under 14 juniors in tennis it, it, it was always my dream to play professional tennis and yep and i'm glad to have done it but there comes a point in time where you realize that okay this was your dream and you've lived it completely and you're grateful for that so what's next you have to start thinking about yourself and i always have been interested in the field of finance and well i was looking for courses anything with regards to finance and then i came across financial modeling and valuations and almost anything any domain in finance be it equity research valuations or even investment banking asset management anything you will need to know how to make a model and how to value companies and the wall street school is literally one of the best companies you can ask for you can just search online they'll help you with everything and after tennis i was very worried as to what i sh- um as to what i should do next should i do this from the wall street school because it is is a bit expensive and placements are also there so i was a bit worried but after speaking to you and also speaking to the wall street team um I was just hooked. So I decided to join the course mm-hmm. and as of right now I just recently got placed at RSM and Ooh. my job profile is a business valuation associate which is a core finance role so one second Himanshu sir thank you so much for everything. Glad glad uh, that we could uh, you know help you with the placements uh, like definitely not, not more would have been able to do it otherwise. You know with respect to you know helping our students you know with the, with the placements in the same yes, way. so glad that uh, we were able, able to help you out but coming back to your journey uh, you know uh, in your formative years you've always been a fan of tennis you know you've molded yourself that you want to be a professional tennis player as you said you are a sam rank 2 in professional tennis so uh, uh, what's your age right now what's your I'm age i'm 21 you're 
Yes, and you sir. left tennis. Yeah. You kind of had. <laughs> I have. I've had to leave tennis. Not completely leave tennis, but professional tennis per se. I still play on the weekends. And what? What's the reason for that? Why did you leave tennis? Um. So tennis is a pretty demanding sport. You have to travel travel every week, and in every tournament, you'll only get one winner and one loser. Mm-hmm. You have to travel every week. You play one tournament, take two or three days break, then travel to another state for another tournament. Mm-hmm. It's very expensive. Mm-hmm. And in, in India, tennis doesn't really have that good of a scope when you compare it to other sports such as cricket mm-hmm. and even badminton also. Mm-hmm. And the other, which is the main reason, was that it was pretty taxing on my body. I've had injuries on every part of my body. You can just name it. Every part of my body. I have been injured. So it was a conscious decision to leave tennis. Yes, sir. And, it was a uh, focus on the uh, professional side of academics and then, then move on with your professional career. Yes, sir. I, com- I, I love tennis. So I want to do something else, which I also loved, which was finance. Got it. So you got into which college in DU? Um, it's Acharya Narendra Dev College, ANDC. It's near Kalkaji. Got it. So was it sports quota or was it a normal? Uh... It was sports quota. Um, I think I applied for like two universities. Mm-hmm. DU was my last option. I wasn't really thinking about it too much. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also in NMIMS and Loyola College. Got it. Yeah. So, uh, so you were done with your plus two. You moved to Delhi. And yes, you continue playing tennis. It's taken a toll on your body and you've said it quit. <laughs> Must have been a very difficult decision to leave tennis. Oh yeah, it was a very difficult decision. I still remember. Mm-hmm. I still remember how sad and devastated I was. Mm-hmm. Because it's a life-changing decision. You've dedicated your whole life to this sport. Mm-hmm. E- even if even if it wasn't competitive all throughout the years. You've dedicated every part of your life to this sport. I've missed birthdays, events, parties, anything you can name it, anything and everything, just to play tennis and improve. So once you leave that part of your life, it that's just sad. Right. So it was devastating for me, but it was necessary, to be honest. It was time for me to start thinking about myself and my career prospects. And have you reconciled to the fact that you're not going to play professionally now? You will just 21. I'm happy with my decision, if anything else, actually. Um, like I mentioned, I am Assam number two. Mm-hmm. All my coaches here in Assam are ranked, are ranked lower than me. <laughs> you know, Assam number one, I know him. He, he's been a good friend, an old friend, actually. Mm-hmm. And even he's in Bangalore. So it kind of feels nice when you see that all the coaches that used to beat you when you were a kid and you couldn't do anything, now you're on top of them. <laughs> so that's kind of a subtle flex. Got it. Got it. So uh, because the body was not in a shape that you, know, that you could play professional tennis, you put it a full stop there. Yes, sir. And your academics, you know, definitely would have suffered in the initial phases, you know, because your your focus was completely on tennis. Completely. Were you nervous as to what is going to happen with my career now? At the very beginning, I was nervous, definitely. But I decided to well, take a leap of faith and go for the Wall Street School. Mm. <laughs> because I was, even if things were a bit hazy, I was confident in myself that I would be able to do anything I put my mind to it, mm-hmm. as it was the case with tennis. So I decided that I would like to pursue finance in its entirety. Mm-hmm. And you guys seem like the perfect option for me to do so. Mm-hmm. And so, yep, I opted for you guys and got placed pretty early, I must say. And I must say that, you, you know, uh, as a 21-year-old or a 21-year young, you know, I first met you, you've come across as a much, much more mature as a 24-year-old, 21-year-old kid than the normal kids of your age. <laughs> Is it Thank something you, to do with the sports? Because sports teaches you a lot. And what sort of personality traits do you think you've imbibed from your sports, which should help you in your professional pursuits or works? Okay. Uh, firstly, I said definitely, because tennis has shaped me. It has molded me into who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. So I've also heard people say you act like an uncle. 
<laughs> ever since I was a teenager. So I'm kind of used to that. Uh-huh. And because you also get tired traveling and playing all your energies put into your tennis court and fitness. Mm-hmm. So that's that. And the main thing I've learned from tennis, literally the main thing, I would say it's patience. The mm-hmm. main thing, it's patience. I remember um, it was in the CBS Nationals. It was quarterfinals. And... Just keep it louder. Just keep okay, it louder. I'm sorry. I remember it was CBS Nationals. It was during the quarterfinals, I think 2019. I'm sorry, it was the East Zone. East mm-hmm. Zone quarterfinals, okay. And 2019, I was playing against a guy. I don't remember who it was. But basically, after every two games, you have to change sides on a tennis court. Okay, mm-hmm. so he was losing pretty badly. He didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So what he thought was, okay, I should try and make him angry. Mm-hmm. So what he did was he just put balls on my side of the court, leave his towel there, leave his bottle everywhere. He just tried to make me mad. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I didn't even think that he was doing all that. I was so focused and patient that, okay, I have to do this and not that. The only reason I came to know about it was because that guy went to his team and he said, why is he not getting mad? He's not reacting to anything I've ever done. Mm. He's not reacting at all. That's how I came to know about it. I was patient and focused on my goal. I have to do this, then do that. One step at a time, basically. So that's the best thing I've learned from tennis. Fantastic. Fantastic. And going forward, you, you think uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, taking sports, you know, you know uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, in a way, a lot of demand for sports has gone up and mm-hmm. which is not just for cricket, you know, India as a nation, you know, sports yes, is sir. encouraged. Your parents were also very supportive of you uh, when you took up tennis because, uh, you know, as you said, uh, it's a costly affair. You have to travel every week and you're on your own. You know, there's no funding as such. Yep. So my parents of, of this fact, uh, not knowing how the future beholds for you. They were pretty supportive. They basically said that I'm free to do whatever I want to do, provided mm-hmm. I give it my all. You can do whatever you want to do, just give it 100% and you'll succeed. They were pretty supportive and believed in me. So that was a pretty plus point for me. And when you had a hard call with them or a discussion with them that, okay, maybe this is... Uh, this is not what I would want to pursue now, you know, with, with the body not, you know, helping out. Yeah. Um, how was their reaction? Okay, so on, initially I began with, when I started realizing the effects of tennis, I was just shampooing my hair and my shoulders were hurting pretty badly. It was like that bad of a condition. Mm-hmm. I was going to rehab everything. And so it was time for me to rethink my decisions and everything. Mm-hmm. So I did tell my parents and they said, that I was right. I had to rethink my decision about my life and everything because I can play sports. I can still do it. But this time playing professional during the college years, that was my time to show them that I can do it. In fact, this college time during these three years, I had proved my proof to myself and my parents that I could do it. And, and that was enough for me. So even in the end, my parents were supportive. If you still want to play tennis, you're free to give it one more year. But you have to prove to us that you can be at least at the top 50 in the nation by one year. So they did leave me with options. And it was up to me to decide what I was going to do. And you were sure that this is the time to put a full stop and, and move on in your professional career? Because you're yeah, still, still one. You're too, still too young. I, I guess I am still young. But I felt as if it was the right time. Um, because personally, I feel like if you're at your peak, you shouldn't know when to just come down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm at my peak. I knew that I could have gotten the top 50 at least by this year. Mm-hmm. Had a like practice regularly and everything. But I want to do something else. I loved my time at tennis. It has shaped me into who I am. I'm grateful for the sport. Really, really, really grateful, in fact. And But you have to know when something comes to an end and you have to move on. Got it. And in your school years, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, you know, those formative years, were you a good student academically or you were totally into sports? Or you were balancing both of them? 
Okay, so let's start from the beginning. I started tennis at like first or second standard. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't really playing seriously. Uh, I think I was a school topper <laughs> at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. There was a merit list uh, every year and I was at the top 10 every year, basically. Mm -hmm. And I started preparing for tennis seriously uh, from class four. Who was your role model at that time? Oh, Roger Federer. He still is. <laughs> And as I was saying, yep, I started playing seriously. I started playing tennis seriously at class four, and it's safe to say my grades went downhill mm -hmm. because you have to put a lot of energy into the sport, your your mental and physical energy, and you're just tired after that. So you were going to school, uh, or you were not going to school, or you were just being. To I was going to school. I was going to school. Um, normal school timing still two, three, and then I used to play tennis. Alright. So what was your routine in your school days? How was it? Okay. So during my school timings, there weren't really good coaches here, so it was more or less up to us to play. They were just watching, if anything. Mm -hmm. Just a lack of good coaches in Assam, I can. See, I can tell you that. L lack of coaches everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Because tennis, uh, beyond Mahin, uh, Mahesh Bhupati and Leander Pace, you know, uh, you know, or to some extent Rohan Bopuna, it's not taken off. It's not it taken hasn't. Off. The closest we have is Sumit Nagal, who recently broke in the top 70, I think. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you know, we had, uh, you know, Rohan Bopuna, he's, he's 43, yep. plus, you know, who was representing India in the Olympics. I mean, that was yep. his last one, but you know, uh, we don't see many people coming uh, uh, to the scale and the level which Leander Pace and Mahir Bhupati and Rohan Bhopna have been able to achieve. That's true. I think that I'd say that's also because of lack of good coaches. Mm -hmm. I have experienced good coaches and I've experienced some of the worst ones you can even think of. Mm -hmm. I hate some coaches, basically. <laughs> and there are quite a few bad coaches in Assam. There was one good coach, he left for Thailand. And so you were on your own, you know, despite the fact that you were Assam number two, there was no help from the state government, nothing. No help. You, Absolutely you no help. University, you know, in the pursuit of better opportunities in this yep. thing or what? Yep, the main reason I came to the Delhi, not DU specifically, was because I knew some like tennis players in Delhi. And, well, they had good coaches, good facilities, everything. I knew some people there. So I decided to just hop on the, hop on the opportunity I was given. Because DU wasn't really my top option. But then I felt, okay, if, if I have to prove it to myself, then this is the right time. I will play, I will try professional tech, basically. So I went to Delhi, found, found some amazing coaches. Mm -hmm. I, still, I still text with my fitness coach and my tennis coach. Absolutely amazing. Yep. Thank you to both of them. <laughs> but you are frequently breaking down. You know, your body was frequently breaking down. You know, uh, at the level of, uh, at you were in, uh, you know, Assam number two in tennis, uh, no support, you know, the, on, the only financial support your parents could give was in, in terms of finances. Right? Exactly. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're on your own. On right? My, on and own. not very sure about how the career beholds for you. So it was, you know, it can just be a passion. It can be anything else beyond that. Yep. Um, I think it's a bit sad and a bit disappointing that as a sum number two, I didn't get any support. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, I know the Assam number one gets support, but that's not from the Assam government. <laughs> he has his own sponsors in Bangalore, Karnataka. All right. Okay. And there was, there's also one more guy. He was but he, he is still a good tennis player. He is in the top 30 in men's. He's from Assam. But since he didn't really get any support here, so he shifted to Kolkata. And he's getting support there. And otherwise, uh, which are the top cities in India where the sporting infrastructure specifically for tennis is good? Okay, specifically and, uh, for tennis? We, uh, or is it not good at all? Or is it not nowhere close to the international standards the way it is? I won't say it's close to the international standards because um, in foreign countries, you'll have one court and mm -hmm. at max, you'll get three or four players in one court and you ha you basically have one coach to supervise one court. So you get plenty of personal connection with the coach. Mm -hmm. The coach can properly assess you, assess your body, change whatever they need to. 
I won't say the name of which court in Delhi only. It's pretty popular. <laughs> but they have like only two courts and like 30 something people. Two courts and 30 people. And you 30 can just people. imagine. So yep. how uh, so how would the toppers in tennis come out? <laughs> That's the issue. Um, even the toppers in tennis. Okay, so they have two two courts basically and everyone plays in those two courts and if you don't have the chance to play in the court you have to go and run so people take turns doing like that and if you want to practice properly most players they just book courts and play with themselves lack of good coaches sir i'm telling this is more of a recreational sport than you know than in a, india than, than a professional sport in india yes i, I can say that so fair enough. So uh, you know you have your parents' support. You know uh, yes, you you had your passion. There won't be any regrets in your life whatsoever. That you know you've pursued something that that you've loved always. Uh, Roger Federer has been your uh, you know <laughs> your biggest uh, you know idol. Now coming to uh, the fact that you know uh, uh, tennis is a buy. Do you regret anything, or uh, you, you're happy with the way the things have been? Do you regret the fact that maybe academically you could have done a little more or uh, that, that uh, you know, maybe the personality that you have shaped being in sports, you know, you won't, don't want to reverse anything? Okay, if I have to look back and think about regrets, I'd say one of my biggest regrets would be not moving to Delhi sooner. Honestly, that would be my biggest regret. Obviously, um, I just dis- I decided not to like study properly even after I was tired. I could have still still done a bit like study for one hour at least. But I was still a kid and tennis was taxing on me. So I wouldn't say academically. But I wish that I could have just shifted the Delhi a bit earlier. <laughs> Okay. And are you are your parents from the sporting background or you know it was just a passion that you had and they supported you? Okay, so my mom did play badminton, but just like school level, she wasn't allowed to pursue it professionally or something. Now going ahead, you know, so tennis is a full stop. Maybe you will play it as a recreation and maybe follow the sport, uh, but not professionally. Yes, sir. So, uh, so then your decision to join the Wall Street School, you know, to pursue a career in the field of finance. So, so this was a backup option. That if this not this does not work out, then you know, then this is the plan B for you. Um, I wouldn't really call it a backup option because my although my main option was tennis. Mm-hmm. Uh, once I decided that I would not like to pursue it any longer, I just stopped thinking about it. So if if anything, Wall Street was my best option. <laughs> mm-hmm. And how much does you know? Uh, in case you want an idea, you can choose not to answer this as well. Uh, how much does a top-rated tennis player in India earn? Oh, everyone's just in losses, actually. The top-rated tennis player in India would not be earning. Be- because once you okay, so in this field of tennis, the money you see, you get that you get everything from sponsorships. So it's pretty tough to get sponsors here in India. I know a player; um, he's in top fifty in the country. Mm-hmm. And the only money he makes is if he wins a tournament. It used to be exhibition; they've changed it. But as of right now, the lowest level in tennis is Aita rupees one lakh tournament. Mm-hmm. One lakh is divided amongst all the players. Oh, so you all have the first players. of all the joining. I mean, that sign up fees to to play there. Yeah. And uh, so so rest everything goes in the costing, and the top player gets. Three thousand rupees. Um, I think I might have understated it a bit. Can I just check it? Because so it's, so, three, yeah. it's not much. I can tell you. The like just going back to the state and playing the tournament. That's too demotivating, money wise. You know, you can only be playing. You know, if if this is the the financial aspect of it, you will be only playing in case. You know, uh, uh, you know, you're absolutely passionate about it. Yep. Otherwise, monetary wise, I don't think so. You know, it's it's very discouraging number the, the the one that you're given. It's very discouraging, sir. And plus, plus you have to make uh, your own travel. 
right? Yep. You have to have your own coaches, right? So, <laughs> right? And, uh, and most stay, players, and stay most off players in the country, they don't have coaches. Because they can't afford them. They can't afford them. Coaches are expensive. And maybe On average, it'll that take... That is the reason it. talent does not come out in tennis. Uh, because exactly. the infrastructure and sponsorship is not much there. I'll give an example. If you focus completely on tennis, it'll take you at least one lakh per month. If you do coaches, fitness coaches, court booking, racket, strings, everything, one lakh per month. That is the minimum investment that you have to make to ensure that you keep on playing. Yep. I know some friends, um, they're not in the US, but while they were competing in India only, they had to spend like at least two lakhs per month. They had to. Okay. And everything was and being financed by their parents. Got it. So at the time the parents can support the passion, yep. it's okay. But ultimately, in case you can't see you yourself going further, then the full step happens. Then they become coaches. Okay. I know I have got a lot of friends, like top 30, top 20. You can just ask them what's their end goal. They'll say, I'll become a coach. And okay. the cycle just keeps on repeating. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now, uh, so the Wall Street School came into the picture, right? Uh, you worked hard in the training, <laughs> right? And you were competing. I won't say competing, but there were fellow colleagues of yours who were chartered accountants also, who were CFAs also, who were graduates. MBAs also. also, right? So, <laughs> uh, did you think that you you have you stand a chance, or uh, are you you backing yourself? Academically, I felt as if I was very underqualified, mm -hmm. but. Personally, I feel as if I have a good profile. Yeah. So if the recruiters gave any sort of note to my profile, then I thought that I'd have an edge over everyone else. But academically, no. Okay, understood. And uh, how was your experience in the interview? I mean, you know, uh, how many rounds of interviews you had? Okay, so there were two interview rounds, but overall three rounds. So for first was an MCQ exam. Then I had um, an interview round with, I don't know who they were, but I think they were manager level, I think. And the final interview was with the senior director. Got it. And I was asked a trick question, so. Okay. So were you confident that you'll be able to Nikalo the interview or uh, you were feeling jittery or? No, no, no. After the first interview, I was pretty confident. I had answered more or less everything perfectly. But the final interview, uh, um, Shall I repeat the question? I don't know if you've seen the question. No, no, I have not. Okay. Okay, so the senior director, he, he was in front of his computer. He had a mouse in front of him. He told me that if he sells this mouse to me for 800 rupees, and I give him 1,000 rupees, but it doesn't have change, so he goes to someone else. And from someone else, he borrows 1,000, and from that, he gives me 200. And I went off. And I just basically went off. And later he finds out that the 1,000 rupees note I gave him was fake. How much of a loss is he in? So I was kind of flabbergasted because I hadn't prepared for this valuation question. <laughs> he was trying to check your uh, you know, presence of mind and your basic arithmetic capabilities. I was pretty surprised. And didn't think uh, <laughs> that was a good interview after that. <laughs> Okay, so what is your career plan now? You know, where do you, what do you want to do now onwards? Now that you've got into a very good profile, very good company, right? And Thanks. hopefully, you know, the ghosts of the past, you know, in terms of your professional career, yes, tennis career is not there, you know, and you're just 21. Right? So what, what lies ahead for a tough? Okay, as of right now, I'm interested in doing the CFA. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in that. Uh, and after that, I will go for an MBA. Mm -hmm. But most probably abroad, not in India. So I'll get some decent work X, complete my CFA, give my GMAT, and then go for preferably a top B school. Understood. And you ultimately want to settle in India? You want to settle abroad? Or have you ultimately in India, to be honest. I might have a lot of bad memories, but... I also have pretty uh, decent memories. Has India uh, let the maybe the infrastructure or otherwise yeah, has it let down the sports person in you? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm pretty disappointed because there are some good coaches who aren't well recognized. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, because they're up they're if anything, they're up and coming. Mm-hmm. So but they're pretty good coaches. That's my guarantee. And on the other hand, you'll have some pretty old coaches who do not know how to even analyze a person's technique. They just know that do this, do that, and they'll just leave you. And that, so that's a second type of coach. And most of the facilities have been awarded to the second type of coach because they've been in the field for a longer period of time. So it's pretty disappointing. So what is your long-term goal? What do you want to do? Honestly, if I have been given the chance to do so, I'd like to restructure um, tennis in India. It is under ITA, which is All India Tennis Association. So a lot of politics going to into this. A lot of politics, sir. <laughs> and maybe that is the reason why India as a tennis nation has not produced you know good, competent Roger Federers of the world. Yeah, I agree with you. I personally feel as if politics and sports they should be kept aside. Divided, two separate categories. You shouldn't mix them. Right. So, how has been your experience with the Wall Street School? Uh, uh, it how... was amazing and exhausting. I'll tell you that <laughs> because we'd get assignments from you only, sir. <laughs> you say do the assignment yourself. I won't give you the answers. I need them by tomorrow. <laughs> so everyone would have to just hurdle up and discuss everything. And you yes, saw a different version of you once you were out of the training. How how was that? Okay, so personally, I'd say that even though I have patience, I'm unable to sit, sit basically at one place for a longer time because I'm used to running around and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but now I didn't really have a choice. I had to sit here and brainstorm ideas and think what to do next, what not to do. So I, I personally feel that has changed me a lot. <laughs> And yep, uh, honestly, I feel as if I've learned many new things. It was a very, it was a very knowledgeable experience. I really loved it. Um, the staff, everyone was amazing. You, Manoj, sir, everyone, like everyone's really dedicated to their work. Also, so as a student, you can kind of feel they also want to teach you. They want what's best for you. So yep, that was amazing. But it was hectic. You, I had to work hard. Everyone had to. That is how that training was supposed to be, right? To, <laughs> just like your rigorous training physically, you know, it was supposed to be mentally training for everyone. And that's when you become a better version of yourself. Exactly. And that's, um, that's how you learn. Because in the interview, they are going to ask you questions about these stuff only. Because uh, I remember in my, okay, in my first interview, I also had to give an Excel test. Mm-hmm. I was asked index match yeah. and some product. And the only reason I even completely memorized index match, what to do and what not to do, completely understood it, was because you tasked us to give the um, Excel advanced test on the learning portal. Mm-hmm. And I had such a bad result. I was shocked. <laughs> so I did everything completely. And then I learned. Got it. Fantastic. And these are the traits, Dr. that are going to put you in very good state for your professional journey, even personal journey onwards. Thank so, you, sir. The willingness to adapt, to be receptive, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and, you know, acknowledging the fact that there is an issue and working towards it. You know, this is what uh, separates the boys from the men. So, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> fantastic. So any advice you would want to give to one budding players, sports people, uh, and two to the students, uh, you know, who are graduates and uh, who want to make a career in the field of finance? Okay. Firstly, for athletes, for athletes, leave us some. That's my humble request to you. <laughs> that's, that's not a good, <laughs> good one. <laughs> because the sporting infrastructure is not good at all. Or not in the it, It's not good. Even if you understand, then go where? Okay, um, Delhi. I'll give you Delhi. Guruga also. Then you also have Chandigarh and Ahmedabad. From so what I know, these. Guruga or Ahmedabad or Chandigarh. Guruga, Delhi, 
Ahmedabad, Chandigarh. Yep, these are. Tennis sporting infrastructure is good. Yep, tennis is pretty good in these states. Mm -hmm. And to a graduate who wants to make an entry into finance, just learn financial modeling and valuation. You will need to learn it. It doesn't matter if if um, if you get into investment banking division at Goldman Sachs as an analyst, you you need to learn how to value a company because that's what you have to do. Just go for a good valuations course and whatever you learn, make sure you practice it at least once. So it just stays in your brain because you'll have to learn a lot. So skills become more imperative than maybe the degrees that you yeah. have. And ultimately you need to have those skills, right? Because <laughs> this is what what is required. Uh, otherwise, you know, then the personalities come. You you need to have those skills which, which are required and then if you have those positive vibes, uh, uh, those personalities which which are confident and conducive, that is what the corporates look for in, in the candidate. Exactly. Because even if you have a degree, at the very max, the, the best thing it can do is it will lead you to the interview. You won't be able to do anything after that if you don't have the skills. Hmm. You need to learn the skills required, basically. I remember, you know, I was, you know, a little circumspect, uh, you know, asking you to fly down from, you know, from Assam <laughs> to Delhi for the interview, not really knowing whether you're going to Nikalo it or not. But I still, you know, pushed you that you were supposed to come, that, you know, that this is a good opportunity that you were supposed to. Yes, sir. And okay, really, you know, thank uh, you for doing that. <laughs> once the results were out, you know, of course, there were seven students who, who got the final offer. And this was one one name I was the most pleased for. Uh, <laughs> the best, you know, you were also one amongst those seven people. Thank you so much, sir. Like, really, thank you for recommending me to go and just take the risk, basically. Because I did talk with you before, like booking the flight, and you said that it is a good profile, and go f just risk it. At the what's going to happen at most, you won't get the job, nothing else. But if you do get the job, then it'll all be worth it. So thank you for giving Glad that, uh, decent advice. <laughs> and like other coaches, you know, you, you have not uh, had good coaches, uh, as you said in the interview. Maybe this, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is the poetic justice. <laughs> I do, you know, not trying to self praise myself, but maybe this. No, is no, I agree. With you. I agree with you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic, uh, Raktav. Uh, it's uh, it's been a pleasure connecting with you, getting to know you, getting to know about the sporting infrastructure and the struggles which uh, you know the sporting fraternity faces, and yes. there is life beyond sports also you know in case that does not work out a plan b should be there definitely i agree with you right so wish you all the best uh, i can thank see you so much, of very good professional instead <laughs> of you right and thank you sir wishing you the best and let's be in touch definitely thank okay. you so Thanks much for sir. Time for this interview. Uh, yeah always sir you guys help me get the job <laughs> sure so 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 thank you so much and uh, let's be in touch thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Thank you.